I want to take just a minute to focus in on Les Paul and the act Les Paul and Mary Ford to just put an extra bit of emphasis on mainstream pop in the period uh, before uh, 1955, but also to talk a bit about the role of technology and how the development of technology really affects in many ways the way that uh, the history of rock and roll unfolds. Um, some of you may, some of you guitar players may be surprised to know that there is actually a guy named Les Paul, and Les Paul is not just a brand or a model of guitar made by the Gibson Guitar Company. In fact, Les Paul as a guitarist was one of the top guitarists in jazz and in popular music in this period uh, between the Second World War, well, during the Second World War, during the 40s, uh, leading up to rock and roll. I mean, he, he had the best gig uh, in, in all the business in that he was the guitarist for the Bing Crosby group uh, and also recorded on the side um, with his uh, with his jazz group and then developed this duo with his wife Mary Ford um, one interesting thing about uh, these Les Paul and Mary Ford recordings uh, is that Les Paul uh, in did this thing with overdubbing uh, his his music where initially the way he would do it is there, there, were, there were no tapes involved. The way that you recorded something was you actually cut it onto a disc. But if you had two disc cutting machines like that, you could put one thing, you could cut one thing onto a disc, and then once you had that one thing recorded, you could play that back, and while you were playing that back, you could play something else along with it, and then cut that onto a second disc. And then you could take that second disc, put it back on the first machine, put a fresh disc here, hear those two things together, add a third thing, record that onto that disc and then keep adding. So you could add this sort of layered uh, technique, you could do this layered technique of sort of creating track after track after track. Well, one of the things that Les Paul uh, is instrumental in doing is, is creating these layered uh, um, uh, arrangements where there are tons and tons of guitar and also tons and tons of vocal harmonies, all of it just being Les Paul and Mary Ford. One of the things he knew was that um, tape recording was going to be big, big, big in the popular music business and that uh, it, was, uh, it was a technology that was going to change a lot of things and indeed it did. You see, tape recording was developed by the Germans during the Second World War as a way of recording Hitler's voice uh, when he would give his speeches to the nation. The Germans were concerned that the Americans had technology that would allow them to zero in on exactly where Hitler was when he was delivering his radio addresses to the German nation. And then they would bomb that radio station and, and perhaps kill the leader. And so what they decided to do was they developed this technology whereby they could get lifelike reproductions of his voice, send that to the radio station where Hitler could be in an entirely different part of the country at the time. And so that if, they, if the station ended up getting bombed, the worst they would do is ruin a tape recorder. Now, the, the Allies didn't know anything about this until Germany was conquered. And all of a sudden, these troops, one of the first things you do, of course, is take over the communications uh, of, of any city that you march into. And they go into these radio stations. And what do they see? These big reel-to-reel -reel recorders there. And it turns out that this magnetic tape recording, uh, the Germans had developed this to a fantastically uh, high degree of fidelity. Well, Les Paul heard about this and he said, he told Bing Crosby, he said, you know, Bing, this is going to be the next best thing, the next big thing. You, you ought to think about investing in this. So Bing Crosby took the money that he had. He was a rich man at the time. He took a lot of the money that he had and he, invent, he, he invested it in the Amphex uh, tape company. And that ended up making him millions of dollars. He got in on the ground floor of, of recorded tape. And one of the things he was able to do for Les Paul, that is Bing Crosby was able to do for Les Paul, was to give him one of the first eight-track recording machines. Now we're talking about the early 1950s here. Eight-track recording didn't come in generally in rock music until the end of the 1960s. But Les Paul had a machine, he called it the Octopus because it recorded eight tracks, where he could now do what he had been doing by, you know, playing things on different records and playing them back again. He could play one, he could play one thing on track one, one thing on track two, one, one thing on track three, one four, one five. He could build these arrangements up the way he'd been doing. So it was fantastic uh, for him and it all came from his connection um, with, um, 
with, with Bing Crosby there. Um, also, uh, another thing about Les Paul that we, we mentioned earlier is that he's often referred to as the inventor of the solid body electric guitar. Not the electric guitar, there have been electric guitars before uh, for Les Paul, uh, for heaven's sake, Charlie Christian played one with Benny Grid Goodman's group, but the solid body electric guitar. And so it isn't quite true that Les Paul invented the solid body electric guitar, but he was one of the first ones to be involved in engineering a kind of solid body electric guitar. He ended up going into partnership with the Gibson Guitar Company and they produced the Les Paul model. The Les Paul guitar has become iconic. And so these developments in technology, um, this, this overdubbing, this tape technology, this overdubbing technology, um, the development of the solid body guitar, solid body electric guitar, all these kinds of things make a big change. Now, we won't think about Les Paul as being an important figure in rock music per se because none of his music was never rock oriented. But Les Paul as a guitarist was a fantastic influence on a whole generation of guitarists who came after him in rock and roll. Jimmy Page, uh, people like this are all sort of big Les Paul fanatics. These are the songs they heard when they were a kid. Uh, but the technologies that he developed will continue to influence rock and roll for many years, in fact decades to come.